Hi everyone, it's Cherry Enchantress. <laughs> Enchantress. <laughs> I'm here with another talk. Um, the geometric shapes are calling to me. This is one that I've been wanting to do ever since I talked about triangles. Now we're doing circles. And so I wanted to talk about mandalas and um, the seed of life and the flower of life shapes. Um, these are all part of the sacred geometry. They are, um, yeah, they're, they're like alchemical symbols and things that you see all over the place that you might not even notice that you've been seeing. But I, before I really get into it, I want to start with one. <laughs> I want to start with where kind of where I started from, and that was when I got this card. Well, when, when I got this deck, I'll just show you real quick. You might like this deck for yourself. It's very nice. It's called the Enchanted Oracle, and I got this in Virginia before I began my tarot my um, YouTube channel and there's a few things I did to prepare for this channel one I made a wand you know and it's it's been with me through the whole time like pretty much you'll see it on on my altar in every reading just about and sometimes I point with it you know um, the Celtic witch though I will tell you what she is all about as you can see um, she has she has a kind of a Celtic knot symbol behind her. She's got uh, the trifecta tattoo and other symbols. And um, the Celtic symbols also are a type of sacred geometry as well. And I happen to like those kinds of the trifecta kind of thing. So I, I do that a lot and I wear it a lot in my jewelry, you know, the those entwining um, cords and, and things. So. The Celtic witch is saying this, just so you know, if if you ever see it come out, you know what it means, and maybe right now it's also a message for you because you stumbled upon this video or you clicked on it. The Celtic witch is telling you to um, to go ahead and and explore symbols and the meanings behind them. So it's in time to imbue your life with magic tap into your power plug into the universe I was getting this card a lot when I first started my channel so I was like what is this supposed to mean you know and it's so funny because um, uh, Kino had a, a symbol signs from the universe thing and, and what do they mean to you and when I first started you know when I kept seeing this card and I kept seeing symbols I was trying to figure out what did this does this mean for me there is so much available to you. Notice signs and symbols around you. What kinds of power or magic are they hinting at? How can you share that magic? Research magical and historical symbols. Discover one that represents what you are seeking and that resonates with your soul. Find ways to sprinkle that symbol throughout your daily life to inspire and encourage you. Draw it on a piece of paper or stick it to your mirror to see it every morning find a piece of jewelry that incorporates it make a cover for your journal that includes it make a cake and draw the symbol into the frosting do whatever you can to focus your mind and intent to help create the change and magic you desire and then i i got a little more permanent and when i found my symbol which is the Celtic tree of life. Actually, I looked under fairy symbols, you know, I was just thinking, what's a good fairy symbol? And I'm trying to think, what do I need, you know, what resonates with me? And when I saw this, I was like, this is perfect. This, it's about a balance, you know, it's about, it, it's floral, it's, it's you know, a, a tree, but it's a tree that blooms. And it has sort of that Celtic thing that I'm very attracted to. So this is this is my channel logo also, and that's how I kind of got started. The the Phoenix came a little bit later, but <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so this might be your opportunity to get started, okay? So it just starts with one. Just starts with one. 
as far as making mandalas here's a few that I've made and at the end of this video I'm going to give you just a slight little tutorial on how to make a mandala or meditate with a mandala they're very you know rough and <laughs> not perfect but that it's not the point is not to be perfect unless of course you're trying to make a tattoo or something like that or some you know or a logo or something for your business but but just purpose the purpose for meditating it's just mostly um a way to relax and get into a zen kind of energy all right so i'm going to i'm going to pick apart these cards a little bit like, like give you their messages um one at a time and then when we're done with the messages then we'll get into the mandala drawing. But I'll give you timestamps if you don't want to listen to all the messages or whatever, or if you want to come back to it later. So I told you about the Celtic witch, and you can start there, you know, by research. And that's what I, I've done. Also, I want to say to you that <clears throat> my research is not over. <laughs> I am a novice when it comes to sacred geometry. Um, you know, I I learn a, a little bit every day as I go. It's life is a journey, life is a learning experience, and I'm just inviting you to this journey with me. If you already know some things that I don't know, that's cool, that's wonderful. If you are a, a beginner too, you wanna uh, start re researching things with me, that's great. I'm just here to encourage you. I'm not here to show off my brains or anything. <laughs> I'm just here to, to show you that these are like the sacred geometry geometry has been jumping out at me and i feel like it's also about this big matrix that's in you know in the universe and we talk about dimensions all the time like we're living in the 3d and the 5d is where you know we have our our spiritual connections and etc but what do the, all these things mean really right so it's it you know it just takes a little research and and the research can lead to other things and then that can lead to more things and that's actually kind of what this all of this is it's it is a matrix like one thing leading to another or one thing splitting like one of the the main um symbols you might see is like the symbol of the atom it is very much like like the flower you know it's very much like the the uh the seed of life or the sacred flower so let's go ahead and and this um just by the way i got in one of my goddess provisions boxes this would be the uh, a flower of life where the flower starts to multiply and multiply and it just starts with the seed right it starts with one <laughs> and then um this actually i think melanie gave me and it was included in um, some gift that she gave me, which was very sweet. And this also represents, this has like a, a magical powers, a magical energy. It's a coil, and that's the, the next subject I'm going to get into will be spirals, okay? So remind me. No, <laughs> I always say remind me, but I'm going to remind myself. I'll flip this over and talk about coils. But as far as this is concerned, again, it's like the seed of life, the flower of life, you know, it starts with the seed and then it blooms into a flower or a tree or whatever. <laughs> All right, and then, so let's take a look at some of our symbols. We have um, Melchizedek and uh, Gaia. See, Gaia, they both have these, um, these flower symbols behind them. So I'll give you a little message from Melchizedek and from Gaia. We'll start with them. Melchizedek is higher learning and um, it says you have learned from experience and <laughs> more inner study is now required to further your progress so that's just what I you know that's pretty much what I'm saying it's like it's time to research you know more learning more studying so Melchizedek is a high priest who is mentioned in the Bible's book of Genesis and many other sources too. He is here to assist the earth through the ascension process, and there's the earth, um, which is basically moving everyone and everything back to a state of love and harmony. He appears with bright light around him and a long white beard to match his ancient high priest ways, and it is said uh, to have his own order 
of light-filled priests who are able to help spiritual people develop their gifts and qualities. As he works on a high energetic la- level, we can connect him with him through the sacred geometry but, and by focusing on ancient star-shaped symbols. So as I was saying, um, I, if you haven't watched it, if I can remember to do it, I'll link it to this one. But uh, I did a sacred geometry reading about triangles and pyramids and the grand trine and what the symbol of three means, you know. But now we're moving on to to the circle shape and, and the messages of this. The extended message from Melchizedek is this. Um, it's saying, you have learned so much because you learned all about the triangles with me. <laughs> you have learned so much to the point to this point and are learning more every day. You're recognizing all the great lessons your experiences and challenges have brought to you and are preparing for a transition or inner ascension where you will move beyond another level of fear and into the inner sanctum of your heart and soul. Become aware of patterns, ancient symbols, and signs being sent to you from the universe. There's a sense that you are now able to focus in a new way and offer greater light to the world. Melchizedek and his orders are with you now, leading you towards spiritual wisdom. Meditate and connect with their light. So I guess that's kind of like Melchizedek saying, yeah, you are learning a lot and you still have more to go. <laughs> He's telling me that too. He's like, keep meditating and don't fall into, you know, old patterns and let them take you down, a, you know, a, the wrong road. Keep going and you're on the right track. So now Gaia is about Earth connection. Be mindful of the planet and come back to Earth. Stay grounded. (laughs) Gaia is the Mother Earth. She is the keeper of the light who holds the planet in her hands and heart. Her kiss is on every animal's forehead. She is the life that moves through the plants, the sweetness within the honey, and the forces that encourage the bees to fly. She loves, protects, and guides all beings. She asks us to love them too. How can we help them? How can we help the planet? You are blessed to receive the Great Mother card today because it shows that the earth itself, through the image of Gaia, is protecting your path. You are a strong, focused, and loving individual. This also could be a clue that Melchizedek is suggesting to try out that Gaia channel. And I've been wanting to, and I haven't because it's a paid thing, but I feel like maybe it might be an investment worth making, right? So um, that's a possibility right there for some of you. Also, um, just thinking of our planet in general, I think the choices that we have to make now, besides just plain prayer and reaching out and doing simple things like recycling and conserving, I, um, I think we also have to take big steps to make sure that that, um, you know, all our uh, laws and rules and stuff are put into place to to protect the planet, you know, because right now things are looking pretty harsh, you know, things are getting really uh, angry, upset, the planet is upset, and we need to heal it, and we need to heal it with our love, so it it is love, it is prayer, it's spiritual um, pouring out of your energy, but it's also practical things too, like in the real world, um, making sure certain laws are passed and things to help the earth. So I believe in that, you know, you may or may not, but I feel like it's part of the greater good of all of us that just like, um, reuniting with our twin flames or our high level soulmates that to help heal the earth are also a part of this healing and ascension. So, um, Gaia is, is also bringing her motherly love to you and encircling you in a cocoon of peace. If you have had troubles with a mother in your life or are feeling disconnected from your, from, or grieving your own mother, Gaia helps revitalize that connection and will bring healing where it is possible. If you are a mother and are worrying about these duties, know that Gaia is thanking you for your hard work and commitment. The earth is blessed to have you. (laughs) I think of Cheryl and her son. So, and I just want you to know, Cheryl, I think you're beautiful and uh, a kind person. I don't think anything wrong, you know, in a negative way about you. 
All right, and so let's move on now. Let's see. I admire strength. I guess that's the thing, you know. I, I want to have more strength. And it's funny because my wishes as a child was always strength and wisdom on every birthday candle. I've mentioned that before, but it's a strange thing for a child to wish for <laughs> when I had. But those are what, and then I go back to the serenity prayer, you know, which goes back to the other reading I had about triangles and the grand trine and the, and how three parts can bring healing so now we are going to talk about let's go well we'll we'll go into this book in the end let's talk about the great teacher the, what does the great teacher have to say to you so as you can see um he's got the uh, the the flower of life behind him and it's interesting, uh, <laughs> my drawing is kind of funny, but I'll just show you. So the, the coming from this, I'll just try to see if I can point it, point it with a pointer. Hmm, let's see, what pointer will I use? <laughs> oh, I know, if I can find, what did I do with it? I have a, a, a natural pointer I got, I got from the Goddess of Provisions box. And it, it has a flower inside. All right, so, so as you can see, uh, the it's like a flower petal, right? The seed of life, the pet, the flower of life. But when you take just that part and um, overlap, and it overlaps with another part, then it becomes the visica pieces, right? But if you um, if you if you remove one of the pieces, it can symbolize the fish or Pisces. Um, actually, it it's kind of, I guess but it it's spelled it a little different when it's used in 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 this form, but it's still it's pronounced Pisces Pisces and not Pisces but Pisces. <laughs> so it's Vesica Pisces Vesica Pisces. All right. Anyway, but um, and then when when the Vesica Pisces overlaps in that center right there, that's supposed to be you, but that can also represent the eye. So I found a drawing that was kind of like this, you know, it's kind of like this two right here turns into the fish, and these overlapping turns into the eye. There you go. <laughs> Some notes I made. Okay. So let's talk about the great teacher. The great teacher has one of these flowers of life behind him, plus a a dove, you know, a dove of peace, and represents it. He might represent Jesus or God or you know some some being like that. But whether you believe in in those in Christian religion or not, it important to to look at it. This kind of in the general aspect you know the great teacher <laughs> know that what is happening around you is divinely inspired learn from your current experiences then share them with others so that's what I'm doing I feel like I know that I don't know a lot but I want to share what I do know and that way it might spark your your interest in order to research some more my my point of being here has is not to to show you how much I know it's how it's help you to to go to the next step and also help me to go to the next step to keep learning to keep researching so um, this this card was inspired by Jesus who is one of the most widely acknowledged and loved spiritual teachers of all time but there is a great teacher in every tradition and this card represents the one to whom you feel closest as well as the great teacher within the teacher wears simple clothes here to demonstrate that even if you live a simple life, it can be an incredibly spiritual one. He is surrounded by a sense of serenity and harmony because he has absolute trust in the higher power that moves through him, and the dove on the card represents receiving answers to prayers through signs and experience peace through joy. See? The signs. So you guys might want to go check out... Um, Kino's 
reading as well because she's hers is all about signs and that's how this morning started for me signs from the universe this card can represent a teacher in your life or the great teacher within either way it shows that you have de dedicated a lot of time effort and energy to understanding yourself and the world you are having spiritual experiences at this time and gaining a greater awareness of what you need to do in order to grow there is a greater chance that if you've been having any challenges recently, you surmounted them and allowed them to be vehicles to lessons that are helping your spiritual connection. If you feel that you've received messages from heaven or the universe recently, this card is confirmation that these have indeed been holy experiences. Wow, nice. Okay, so there we go. Um, I just brought out this guy, uh, these two from from the Angel Answers because the, one, the Angel Answers is just one of the my favorite card decks that are drawn. The drawings of my of them, the light is just incredible, and you can it's almost tactile. You feel that light, you know, and. Um, but these two also have some geometric shapes. You know, this one is, is like back to the triangle again. But this one has an incorporation of different shapes and the earth. And and both of these shapes are called... Um, I looked this up. They are called the Merkurba shape. So it's kind of like a 3D... Uh, three, three dimensional shape that like pops out at you. It's like triangles with like stars within stars and it's a it pops out at you so this macurba is mixed with the flower of life you can kind of see this could be a macurba as well and the dove is in front of the macurba or it could be just simply a, you know <clears throat> a triangle but i feel like yeah signs from the universe again and i think this is really great because because it goes back to Melchizedek saying, get more information, learn more. It goes back to to my um, Celtic witch even saying, learn more, <laughs> research. And so, and this goes back to to Gaia saying, you know, heal, healing of the earth, you know, you have having faith and knowing that it can, this healing can come about, right? All right, so then from our from the Archangels deck, we have uh, the same symbols, and in this case, we have the Dove again, and the Flower of Life, and this is talking about spiritual understanding, and it kind of goes along with the Teacher, and Melchizedek again, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Celtic Witch, who is also like a teacher, she's being your teacher here, because she she recommended this reading to you, and she recommended um, research into uh, shapes. So the chakra clearing. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even do like the spiritual understanding. Um, this is Archangel Raziel, and he's saying, "I'm bringing you esoteric information and symbols, and helping you understand spiritual truth." So he's bringing this to you, so you can understand spiritual truth, and this can help with your chakra clearing. Archangel Metatron call upon me to clear and open your chakras using sacred geometric shapes then there's also the metatron's cube um which this is like you know another symbol that you'll see quite often is the metatron's cube but we're going we're talking about circular patterns here in this book also from um from the dark moon astrology deck or Black Moon, sorry, Black Moon Astrology Deck, Astrology Oracle shows also the um, the the Flower of Life, the uh, yeah the Flower of Life, and so and this is re representing the sixth house and routine. So let's see what that might have to say. I'm gonna see anything in this that jumps out at me that can help you. Well, first of all, I'll, I'll read you the little poem or the little st statement it's from Martha Graham and it says the body is a sacred garment I like that and the sixth house is ruled by the mutable sign Virgo and by the planet Mercury perfect because we're in we're still in Virgo season for a little while longer and in this 
in the horoscope, it is an area of uh, routine in everyday life. It's not so much a, a dazzling place as, as it has to do with the ordinary. And it rules the body differently from the first house, and specifically your health, especially um, your digestion. But the, I think in a general sense, this is saying you can find you know, miracles and unique things in the mundane, and that's where you can find your signs. It's also talking about um, this whole process is also having to do with your health and to work on your temple, and your temple is an important part of this ascension process. So, and <laughs> um, another thing Kina was saying that you might get into um, in, into that that mindset. Oh, I forgot what she called it. Um, where you just keep thinking and you don't do any action. Um, the reason why I forget what she, how she calls it is because Melanie calls it monkey mind. And to me, monkey mind is just like bouncing around but not having any particular focus. <laughs> And um, and Kino's idea is that is being is kind of like stuck in a place and not moving and not really can't not being able to figure out what to do next, you know. And so sometimes what you can do in that, if you if you're trying to meditate or trying to do be spiritual and you're you're you know it's all it's doing is making you feel kind of alone or lonely or out of out of connection um go do something physical like clean your yard or something that sounds really terrible and boring but once you get out there and do it it starts to feel kind of good you get your mind off of everything and you're accomplishing something and that feels really good and you're sweating and you're purging and <laughs> those kinds of things so that's kind of what I did yesterday and that did help me it helped me a whole lot it gives you a different perspective on things so dry those kinds of things it's almost like the mundane can actually be helpful also this is just kind of off topic but <laughs> sort of on topic um, if you've ever read, read the book eat love pray um, it, she does the same thing. She she goes to this temple where she's trying to learn how to meditate, and they make her work, you know, because the the physical action of working. I don't know what the main purpose is, but I'm pr pretty sure it's because um, it it tires you in a, in a, in a way that's a good. It's a good tired. Have you ever felt that good tired where you've had a uh, hard work but you feel accomplished and you feel really relaxed? And that's a good place to start where you want, you know, to, to start a meditation. That feeling of a peaceful accomplishment, ready and very relaxed. And, and so you might want to do some kind of work or something before you try to meditate and before you get into, into this kind of like focusing on symbols and stuff. Okay, and then finally, we have our secret language of light, the wellness and the visica Vesica, Vesica, <laughs> Vesica Pisces, Vesica Pisces, okay, because I've been pronouncing it wrong, and now I'm I can't break that habit of saying it wrong, but Vesica Pisces, oh look, and we have wellness again, speaking of wellness, I had to eat something because I'm hungry, but, uh, but I will, I'm going to go eat, okay, <clears throat> so, um, so wellness, wellness again. This is very nice. This is wellness. So wellness is talking about kind of the same thing. It's like now focus on your temple and make sure it's healthy and healing and ready to go, ready for the the next thing. Tune into your body. Wellness. <laughs> I couldn't stave off my hunger anymore, so I had a little bite to eat. So you're entering in at a time when your body will become stronger. If you have been or are sick, you are on your way to feeling better. Begin to focus on a sense of well-being. If you are healthy, you will be inspired to strengthen your body through yoga or other form of exercise. Your body is enlightened and knows how to heal itself. Every feeling, be it pain, butterflies, excitement, or love, is a message from one part of the self to another. Tune into your body through meditation and ask what you can do to improve your well-being. Behind the human 
in the image is the flower of life. <clears throat> A symbol that represents the process of creation. It is made up of overlapping circles that are repeating expression of the first circle. It is a geometric metaphor reminding us that the nature of life is continual expansion. Your body takes you everywhere you go, so acknowledge and thank it and love it. <clears throat> I love that very much. And that's a really great, you know, Virgo message too, like just a general... I mean, some general wellness, but I believe in wellness. <laughs> All right, so a meditation that you can do is um, ask the flower of life in the image for inspiration toward a new, new ways to create with your body and life. Close your eyes, slow your breathing, and sense your body. Imagine your breath carrying your awareness into a deeper connection with your physical body. Allow thoughts to float by in your mind and open sensations in your body. Notice any twitches, itches, tightness, or soreness, and observe where in your body this occurs. Are they telling you something? Focus on your body for at least 30 seconds. When you feel ready, imagine golden light pouring through you into the earth. You are grounded and centered. Breathe this wisdom into your life, then open your eyes and feel how good it is to be in your body. Some other things that you can do is get to know your body and as by asking it questions. <laughs> Pay attention to what it is sensing and how it communicates this to you. If you have any pain or discomfort in your body, send it light. When you are in a shower, imagine the water is healing light, washing away all forms of pain. Research chakras and the flower of life. Learn a new way to move your body. For example, Tai Chi, a martial art, yoga, or dance. Or belly dancing is good too. Oh my gosh, I keep talking about belly dancing. I need to get back to my belly dancing. Some journal work you can do is draw or write about three or more things you love about your body. And you might also want to incorporate the, the mandala drawing too. All right, so Vesica Pisces. Vesica Pisces is saying this. Creating soul truth in the world. The outside world feels more real than the inner world because we have been encouraged to focus more on what's outside of us. We have learned to give things that can be seen by others or touched by us more importance than what we feel. Making decisions can become difficult when our awareness is focused away from our inner needs and wants. When our internal and external realities are integrated, decisions are clear and easily made. This leads to satisfaction as there is no resistance to your fulfillment. When we can scan the myriad possibilities open to us in the manifested world, we will know what we want and we and will feel overwhelmed, not feel overwhelmed. <laughs> in this space, we become grateful for the decisions we have made and all the ones we will make in the future. The Vesica Pisces is a symbol that shows how consciousness splits to know itself and expand life. From this place, it can reflect upon itself, seeing itself rather than just out from itself. The Vesica Pisces is the basis of the seed of life and the flower of life. Do you see that all over the place? <laughs> it's the basic shape of those. Um, and no matter how many times it splits and moves outward, there is a, always a link back to itself within this intersection of circles. <clears throat> Place a hand on this image <laughs> or on your heart. Gently close your eyes and breathe deeply. Imagine you are sitting in the middle of a circle. This circle contains the eternal path of your soul, your consciousness. When you decided to come to earth to play in the physical, you created another circle. Imagine another circle forming next to you to represent your physical self. Part of the second circle overlaps the first. Sit in the overlap and feel your soul and physical body at the same time. You are aligned in balance in your heart, in love and enlightened. Feel how free and peaceful you are. Be in this beautiful space you have created for at least one minute. When you are ready, breathe back into your physical self and know you are rebirthed each day through the cosmic womb that is the overlapping circles. 
you enter each day in truth in the overlap and then shift towards one of the realities depending on your thoughts at any moment. Come back to your center, your life is happening now and you are constantly weaving its direction. Where would you like your life to go? Create a new path, open your eyes, and then smile. <laughs> ah, yes, yeah, so it really ties in well with wellness and with your your sixth house and you know taking care of yourself and the earth you know connecting with the earth so here's some other things that you might like to think of imagine you're you are the overlap of the Vesica Pisces for one day meet every experience and person that comes your way without judgment Turn off the television and tune into your inner glow of creativity and entertainment. Speak your truth. This does not mean pushing your judgments. It means allowing yourself to say something to someone without blame or needing anything from them. If this makes you feel vulnerable, it means that you care more about what others think than about what you think about yourself. Draw or write about three things you would like to reboot or rebirth in your life. And then... You can also draw this <laughs> mandala with me. All right. So let's let me do a little bitty tutorial. Let me just, you know, say that first of all, there's no right or wrong. This is just you drawing in a for meditative reasons, right? It's not you being perfect and uh, getting something perfect. But if you do want to make something perfect, then keep working at it. You know, practice makes perfect. <laughs> so, um, there's lots of steps, too, that you can take. I would, you know, just look it up, Google it or whatever, <laughs> you know, of how to draw a mandala. There's also, um, so what I did was I, it starts with a circle, starts with one one circle every drawing starts with an inner circle and then you expand from that circle you there's other things that you can do if you don't feel comfortable making your own mandala you can find ones that are already made and color them in that's a really good way to meditate and relax you can just find a mandala that you think is really beautiful and just stare at it meditate on it scry like you would a crystal ball just scry and see you know you never know what kind of shapes and messages come out at you by by meditating on the on looking at one if you want to draw one with me um, it might just to help you a little bit with measurement you might want to get a square paper and put it in half and then find the center point and this is my pencil from from the goddess provision it's not very dark but you might not want anything too dark to start off with you can also start with a dime or a, uh, something that's already round you know if you have trouble making circles I'm gonna use a, a pen that's where you can see a little bit better I'll go ahead and use this. There. So it's not perfect, perfect, but good enough. And it's not even quite in the center of this paper, but that doesn't matter. All right. So you start in the middle. You might want to maybe even have an, another one smaller in the middle you know and then from here you can draw petals just all the way around and I like to do this listening to music and that is very relaxing so you've already started so your next it's kind of like going in rows it's like expanding and expanding expanding so your next row think of another kind of design um, you can draw humps connecting the petals just you know it's it's not important to be perfect it's important to enjoy the experience your humps can overlap if you want to but I didn't I just did one accidental overlap 
Um, and the more you do it, the, the better, the more symmetrical you get. So if you start to get a little asymmetrical in your drawing, it's okay. Symmetry makes it, makes it look pretty and feel nice, but, but by the time you're done with it, like this one's probably the, my most symmetrical one, but it's still not perfect, but still in the, in, in the distance, it looks, it looks pretty neat, you know? It looks pretty solid. <laughs> So, and this one even is a really, ace, not very symmetrical at all, but it's happy, you know, it just made me happy to do it. So, and you can do it anywhere, like I did these on, like on my lunch break. I think what was happening at that time was I was doing a job that, working, and my job was really kind of frustrating, and I needed to find my center and my peace, and during my lunch breaks or other breaks, I would... I would just listen to music and get some, find some paper laying around and start doing this. You can do other shapes like diamonds, you know, in your next row. But one row, the, they should all have sort of some kind of connection, you know. And then you can connect your, you can connect all of these with yet another circle. Trying to make it even. And then you can go around that circle with little circles. You know, it, uh, like I said, no right or wrong. If you want to, uh, if you really do want it to be perfect, get out a ruler and and measure, um, you know, spots along the way to help you gauge balance and, and lengths. Now I'm feeling a bigger one, like that. <laughs> Something like that, you know? In between the big ones, we can have, maybe we'll do some more of those. <laughs> there. And then, you know, uh, maybe like semicircles swooping down. And then you just keep going and going and going, you know. Um, there, There's patterns out there. Maybe you can, like, look at something, too, and try to copy it. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You can fill in if you feel like it, you know, like, oh, maybe this needs a bunch of little circles or something, you know. give it texture a lot of times um, you can pick a theme like in this case I was thinking of of uh, Taurus and Venus Taurus and Venus symbols you can think of other symbols that you'd like to to incorporate you know that mean something to you and then if you get like a really nice um, symmetrical balanced mandala you can you know make it a logo a sticker a tattoo all kinds of stuff so there you go, and then you just keep going and going and going, you know, maybe more things like this. I feel like once you finally feel comfortable with your layers, the outer layer, it doesn't really matter because I've seen all kinds of different mandalas and how the out, the last layer looks. My favorite though is when it's like a complete circle, when it's completed like that you know but you don't have to do that <laughs> you know you can you can like your completed one can have like little points coming out at the end there is no right or wrong way you know 
and that looks kind of like a sun, you know? It's kind of bright and cheerful, you know? So those are some ideas, you guys. And um, if, if you like it, you know, I recommend that's a great way to to meditate with just listening to your favorite music and then just do it's like doodling you know it's but it's making sort of a sacred shape it's like a growing shape and it feels very peaceful and it can help connect you with your your spirit and with your body it can help connect you with the universe and it can help you connect to the planet and while you're doing this you can think healing thoughts for yourself and for the planet you can listen to that kind of music, like um, solfeggio type music, and then do this while you're listening to solfeggio. And they have actually mandala meditation music out there <laughs> specifically. You can do all of that. So, so there you go, guys. It starts with one, and that's all you need to get going. And then once you get going, then it just multiplies, and it multiplies and multiplies and keeps going and expanding. And that's how it is too when it with it, when it comes to society, and when it just takes you know one to start this wave of of change to make this world a better place. And so in your mind, you can also see it that way. Like you're the the center of this wave, creating this massive change that helps heal the planet, puts this protective blanket and coat over the blank the planet. <laughs> Whatever you see, though, I mean it's. Um, it, it visually too it's very important to help see health and life and growth see how the 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 these symbols these sacred symbols today the circular symbols are about plants and flowers and seeds so it's all it is about nature and growth and blooming and becoming greater and better so let's all try to focus on that all right i hope you like that faith trust and pixie dust